All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started with our NASCAR Cup Series post-race press conferences here in the Media Center at Richmond Raceway. We are now joined by Joe Gibbs, team owner, Joe Gibbs Racing. Coach, take us through those last laps from your perspective. Yeah, uh, well, what happens at the end like that, uh, we go all day, we run, have so many laps like that, and then at the end, I'm holding my breath, and of course, you see a caution. Didn't even know why uh, until I looked up and saw everything. Uh, just, I think what you what I reflect on is when you have four cars like that, and you see those guys battle as hard as they do, each and every one of those cars, and you just hate it for Martin to have a night like that where he fought so hard. And so it just it's one of those things you reflect on. Really happy for Denny, mm -hmm. Mavis, our new sponsor, sponsor. Auto Owners was on um, uh, Martin's car. And so it just, uh, it was a battle, really. I know that mm -hmm. there wasn't, um, it, it, the stage breaks, not a lot of cautions, but I think it was really, really a battle. And so appreciate our guys tonight. We love coming to Richmond. Uh, it's a favorite place for us. Um, and I, I think our sponsors here, we had a large number of sponsors here tonight. It's a big deal for us all the way around. So really appreciate it. I know you guys are anxious to get to the important guys, Denny and, <laughs> and, and Chris. So we'll get to them as quick as we can. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and open up to questions. We'll start here with Bob and make our way around the room. I'm Bob Pockers, Fox Sports. I two. The first is, what did you think of the use of the wet weather tires? Were you good with it and with the way NASCAR handled it? Yeah, I, I think we all kind of felt like uh, if that was going to be the case and it wasn't really raining hard, uh, we, did, we, we didn't have windshield wipers, but I, <laughs> I heard a couple of guys' comments said they never use them anyway. So, <laughs> but uh, I felt like as long as it really wasn't a steady downpour, that that would probably be the way we would get the race started. And I don't know if you're aware, but Hendrick Motorsports is going to do a big 40th anniversary celebration uh, next week at Martinsville. And I know Rick played a pr pretty big role when you got into the sport. What did yeah. you think his impact was on your entry into the sport? Yeah, I, I think it was major. Uh, I had an interesting phone call. So I'm, I'm there in Washington, and I was thinking about trying to get into racing. J.D. and Coy said, Dad, let's get in racing in some way. And so everybody had told me the person you need to call is Rick. Well, <laughs> when I call Rick, he said, yeah, I'm going to put my, ge uh, my general manager with you. And that was uh, Jimmy Johnson. And so that's how we started out. Jimmy Johnson was taking me around to everybody. Uh, at that point, Chevrolet, and he went with me to Interstate. And so Rick played a, a key role in getting us started. We also bought some stuff from him. We also had a motor, a motor package with him uh, for quite a while. And so Rick was instrumental. And I think with our sport, uh, almost everybody here knows to come into the sport, it really does help to have an alliance. In those days, it wasn't called an alliance, but that's really what he was for us because we, were, we had 17 people our first year. And so just really appreciate him. Um, you know, we joke back and forth, kid each other all the time and have a good relationship. Um, <coughs> I invited him to a football game. So he comes to the football game, just a quick story. You probably heard this. And he wore these boots, these fancy big boots. They came apart on the sideline. It was freezing cold. And he almost died on the sideline the night he came. So that was a side, side story. All right, let's go to Chris Powell. Chris Powell, College Coach Live. Coach, you had um, a great weekend for the organization. You had out Chandler wins yesterday in Xfinity Series, and also Denny wins today. Uh, what's your thoughts on just um, this weekend overall? Yeah, I, I think just uh, love coming here. It was obviously a, a big weekend for us 
Just really appreciate that. And again, it emphasizes in Xfinity, we got four cars. Three of them, you know, have been running really good. And honestly, it shows you how hard our sport is. For Sheldon, I feel so bad. You know, we've had three real tough races in a row. And so uh, it just goes to show you our sport is really tough. And it's not often you get to walk away from the racetrack and have all four teams happy. It just doesn't. And tonight's a good example, you know. Uh, but anyway, I just really appreciate it. Appreciate coming here. Uh, the fan base here, I always get along really good with them. When, when we go to hospitalities and stuff, there's a lot of Redskin fans here. And so they treat me great. All right, let's go to Randy. Randy Hallman, Richmond Times Dispatch. Joe, uh, Denny uh, talks about his goals long range uh, sometimes. What are your goals for Denny? Yeah, obviously, just we, we want him. It's all the obvious things. He wants to get to 60 wins. I think that tonight made it 53. I told him I'm counting the clash. <laughs> So we're at 54, <laughs> but uh, I think he wants to get to 60 wins. Uh, that's a huge deal for him. And then I think everybody, everybody uh, asks him the question about winning a championship. Uh, obviously, we would uh, love to see that happen. You know, I, I met with him uh, up at Watkins Glen, and we were talking, and I told him that, you know, for a guy that is where he is in his career, he had struggled with road racing. And it shows you, though, his desire and drive, you know, even at, at where he is in his career, because he went to work on road racing and did a number of things. They put uh, uh, Tyler's setup in the car for him. He did things like that, had a tough time driving it, went to work in a simulator. And for him to come back at his age and set on three poles, uh, you know, uh, is a huge deal. It shows you his talent, and it shows you his willingness still at this point in his career to really work hard at something. That's hard work. And so, um, anyway, uh, you know, it's been a great relationship when you think about it. You know, 18 years, FedEx has been there, and for us to enjoy this, it's really been special. Okay, let's come over here. Over here. Coach, I don't know if you were able to see post-race, but uh, Barton was, as you know, probably not happy with the result and ran into both, it ran into Denny. Talk about, like, how bittersweet that result is considering Barton's dominance, and is that, given what Martin did post-race, is that going to be handled maybe in the team meeting on Monday? Well, I think here, here's, what, here's what happens. These guys put so much into this. They're all, I mean, great competitors. And these things are so hard to win. And so when you have an experience the way Martin did tonight, you know, to race that hard, you know, at, at one point there when the five got in front of us on that pip stop, I mean, he came right back and got it. I mean, he drove his heart out. And so, you know, then to have a caution, we go that far, and then to have a caution with three laps to go, you know, that was just, it was devastating. We came out of there and we came out second on the pit stop. And so, uh, honestly, you just feel, <laughs> you know, uh, that's what I was trying to relate to everybody. You, you're happy for Denny, certainly, and everything that happened tonight for him. But then, you know, you see that in, Martin, how hard he fought for this and how, how much he wanted it. But that's a part of our sport. It's, it's really hard. And you see these guys, when it gets down towards the end of these races, they're going for it because they are really hard to win. And so you can have that happen, particularly if you've got good cars, good drivers. They all want it. They want it for their sponsor. They want it for themselves, their career. And so you really feel for them when they go through a night, uh, you know, like Martin went through this night. You just feel for them. All right, we can take one more question for Coach. Go ahead. Good evening, sir. Uh, congratulations to you and your team for success so far this year. Uh, you recently brought back uh, Mr. Al and forgive me if I mispronounce his name, Almero, towards your team. 
what was that like in the decision to do that for this year and going forward for next uh, next week? What are your plans for the team? Yeah, uh, Eric Amarola. Yeah, uh, huge deal for us. What happened on that? He was in our diversity program that we had when Reggie White was, you know, with us, and he was the owner of the of uh, the diversity team we had. Uh, Eric went through there. Uh, he's a uh, Cuban descent. You know, we had um, Bubba went through there. Uh, Daniel Suarez went through there. So all of those guys went through our diversity program. And um, Eric, <laughs> we got in a conversation about a year ago. <laughs> and I said, you need to come back and finish your career with us. You know, he's been 19 years ago when he was with us. He's been really, really just a class person. And I mentioned to everybody what kind of guy he is. Um, J.D. had a lot to do, my son, with getting him to our race team. And J.D. got sick, and it was over a five-year period. He gradually, you know, lost all physical. He just couldn't. He couldn't con con converse with anybody or anything. It's kind of hard for me to say. Eric Amarola would come and sit with him, even when he couldn't communicate, for two and three hours at his house. That's the kind of person he is. So we had a chance to get back together, and he said, you know, I can come over. I think he's working with – He's well, he's not thinking. He's working with our young, young drivers. We've got a number of them in Xfinity. I just appreciate him so much and the kind of person he is. So that that was that started all of that. And uh, so anyway, we want to certainly keep him as long as we can. Coach, thanks so much for right. coming thank, in. Thank you all. And congratulations appreciate on the it. win. Appreciate it so much. God's blessed us with a great group of people. And thank you all for all you do to make us look good. awesome today we had a great service by the way and, and it was really great i appreciate nascar letting us do that and uh i, I really appreciate being a part of that on easter all right we're going to be joined here momentarily by our race winning driver and crew chief We'll go ahead and continue on with our post-race press conferences here at Richmond Raceway. We are now joined by our race-winning driver, Denny Hamlin, driver of the number 11, Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota, and our race-winning crew chief, Chris Gapehart. If you have a question, please raise your hand, and we will get a wireless microphone to you. We'll start front here with Randy Hallman. Randy Hallman from the Richmond Driver's Dispatch. Denny, uh, tell me, Tell me what you, how you want to be remembered. You've got, you've got goals. You've talked about your goals. How do you want to be remembered 20 years, 30 years from now? Uh, just, you know, back in the day, it was always to be uh, just a local short track hero uh, at Southside Speedway. I just wanted to be a guy that, like, every time I went to the track, 
or got on the track, people would grab their stopwatch because they knew I was going to be someone that they had to beat. Um, I don't know, just, uh, you know, respected, um, you know, uh, just someone that could win at all types of racetracks. Um, I, you know, I, I haven't really thought about it um, from, you know, kind of what, what happens long after you know, you're, you're gone, but y you hope to set, you know, marks and records that stand for a long time or it's always in the conversation of the, you know, the uh, someone that's won at a track many, many times. And so uh, just, just want to be a contender, you know, just uh, one of those good stories from local short tracks to, you know, making it to the big time and winning a lot of races. Okay, let's go next to Bob. Uh, Bob Parker's Fox Sports had one for each. Uh, Denny uh, Martin said he felt like you jumped the restart. I'm curious, NASCAR said that you didn't. I'm um, curious, like, what is the strategy in trying to go right there, you know, right when it's, right when you can? Yeah, I mean, I, I went right at it for sure. Um, I, I did that because I saw those guys rolling to me. Um, you know, the, the 22 was laying back, the 19 was rolling. Uh, a couple miles an hour quicker than I was, so I wasn't going to let them have an advantage that that my team earned uh, on pit road. So uh, certainly made sure I, you know, once my nose got there, I, I took off right away. Uh, but still, you know, we were side by side and down in the down the water in the turn one. <laughs> and Chris, I'm curious what you thought of how NASCAR handled the uh, the non-competitive pit stops and the wet weather tired. Uh, situation did you feel like when they had non-competitive pit stops that it was did you feel like if they had had competitive pit stops at that time that would have been an unsafe situation for your crew well if it tells you anything when um Sirius interviewed me in victory lane i i w i just realized we had won the first ever oval race that started in rain points race so honestly to me hats off i, I thought it all went pretty seamlessly and exactly like they advertised they wanted to do it and uh, it was nerve wracking for all of us because we had never done it before and there was points and, and a lot on the line and you've got to watch the radar and NASCAR is trying to communicate to the teams when are we going to go and how's all this going to work and they, they told us it would be situational whether it would be competitive pit stops or not so there's a lot of logistics that has to be covered there for the teams and NASCAR but honestly I, I thought it went seamless I thought it did exactly what they wanted it to do. Okay let's go to Jordan and then and then to Matt. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. This question is for both of you. What did you um, think of the quality of racing um, in stages two and three? Because obviously stage one was, you know, wet weather. I, it was tough. I mean, obviously we, um, we were all just kind of running in a train there. One, two, three. Um, it was just, it was, it was really hard to pass for sure. We we're all kind of running the same speed and as soon as you get your tires hot, then you just can't go anywhere. Um, you know, I didn't think it was much different than what we had in the past. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, it, it wasn't overwhelming for sure. It was definitely a track position race. It seemed like there was about four to five guys that you, know, you put them in the front, they were going to be hard to pass. Um, but that's just, you know, kind of what we got and, you know, it was up to uh, us to just stay close and you know the team had an opportunity to do something great there by you know running me long you know we caught those guys but even with 10 lap tires just couldn't, couldn't pass and we we got there really quick i was amazed how quick we got there but then we just stalled out so uh, it's tough you know because you know you kind of look at <clears throat> you know the difference in bristol and here it's just a dramatic tire fall off and wear um you know i he sent me some wears last night. Just, you know, the left side tires just don't wear as much as uh, they really need to to get big, big fall off. And so we're all just running re pretty much the same speed. Even lap cars, if they really want to make it tough on you, they can just kind of hold you up. So it's uh, it, it's difficult. So it takes all the parts of the team to, you know, like a pit crew to, to get your wins when it's like that. Yeah, I mean, I would echo that. For me, I'm I'm lost in a Richmond race, and when I say that, there's just so much that goes into a strategy of a Richmond race, um, and and that's a lot of fun. But it, you got to stay on top of it. I mean, if it goes green, the car is parked in your box in 40 laps or 55 laps, depending upon what you do, and 
you've got to mix that nuance up throughout the race based on the situation and based on how your car's running and there's a lot to it so i was more so locked into what i needed to do to try to gain us the advantage to leapfrog those last few cars to kind of evaluate it from from the perspective that you're trying to get me to evaluate it um honestly i thought it was a great race um but it's a great richmond race so i don't know how well that gets transmitted to everyone so following up on that you guys are both short track guys but the history here of this race is what you described it as so knowing that and this hasn't been well received by fans necessarily does this race does this track continue to deserve two races each year um i you know i think it's um you know where else where else is you going to go right i mean NAS nascar owns it so they're going to they're going to want to go to another nascar track and if they have another another nascar track that that's already got a date as well so it's um i mean i don't i don't know what else uh you do um but certainly I, i'm i'm it's not fair because i'm biased and have grown up loving this this racetrack so i'm uh, always going to vote for it to have two races for sure and i thought today that nobody really ran out too far I, I think we've seen some richmond races where some guys get way out there um at times when they when they kind of hit it and um we were all just in a wad there for 150 laps or so just just a couple car lengths here and there so i mean you know from nascar's point of view with the, you know they want us all just in the picture on tv that it probably was a good race from that standpoint by the way thanks for the pick <laughs> yeah all right we're gonna go to matt weaver next Matt Weaver, Sports Knot. Uh, for both of you guys, can you provide me some insight into what makes your over the wall guys so week in and week out consistently, like clearly so much better than everyone else's? Is there something in the preparation or skill set? I mean, I, I yeah, I mean, I think just from my standpoint, you know, these guys have had time to mesh. Uh, they've had a few years now working together. Um, you know the the whole pit crew department is is really went through a lot of changes over the last couple of years and it's starting to show fruit um you know my team you know i was looking at kind of the average ages of all the pit crews and mine is definitely on the lower end when you average all their ages up but for them to now be on top of their game and be young it that you know they've got a i mean they're they're, sh they're right there um at the top already and you know who knows how far they can go so it's just there's a lot to it when you can get some uh, you know get people working together and you know it's no different than modern chris's relationship just over time you get to understanding each other you know their next move and um you know and i think it, it, certainly with a pit crew with this got a lot of choreographed uh stuff that they have to do and everyone's watching each other's toes and not stepping on each other you know having that uh, group working together for so long is certain sh starting to show what it what it can do Chris yeah um, I'm the engineer but he did a great job of quantifying or of a lot of the quantif uh, quantifiable stuff honestly and I don't want to diminish that um, Joe Gibbs racing took a path um, in the gen 7 era that just honestly didn't work and um, at a sports top level when you fall behind uh, and there's constant improvement being had by all the top teams, it's difficult to catch up. And there's a chance you won't. So I can't um, brag on the pit department enough, uh, all the management at Joe Gibbs Racing and, and, and the guys, all the athletes, not just my athletes, for, for buying in um, to, to the work and the effort that was going to have to be put forth to catch up. Um, but really what I want to speak to is the intangibles because that's that's where magic happens um it's it's people that believe that they can do more than they can as individuals and my my team not just my pit crew my team um they pull the rope selflessly um they know they got each other's backs there's there's you know if you have a bad play or a mistake everybody's there to pick them up how can we help you be better what do you need um, and that, that's, that's the special part. You see it, you see it in sports, <laughs> uh, all different types of sports. And, um, this group has all of the makings, um, to put up the kind of numbers that they're putting up. And I'm just, it's just so fun to watch them have fun. And, and again, that's the, you know, 
18 people I have on my roster and, and just to watch the pit crew um, get to win a race like that. Um, that's their that's their walk off home run. It doesn't get any better than that for a pit crew to win it like that. So it's just a joy to watch everybody work like this together. And one more for Chris, the, the decision to run long there at the end. And I'm curious was 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 there an option to even it's kind of a moot point now, but to split that final stage, which is longer in half, or is there something that goes into that that we don't even see? Yeah, I just lost count of the laps. No, uh, it's it's. It's it's the love it's Richmond. That's what I love about it because you know the the previous stop in that race we opened this the stint. I mean we were the f first ones to come. Um, but you know there's certain things that I look for at this track that that um, are are very well known and understood. And um, you know I I was honestly caught off guard a little bit by by when our competition pit for the second time, but. Uh, again, the, the relationship and, and the trust, and I'm sure when they peeled off when they did, part of him's thinking, oh, oh boy, I knew what you're here, doing. here we go again. This guy's going to well, run me exactly long and <laughs> put it on my back and carry me back to the front. Uh, you know, but it's numbers, it's math. He, he, he feeds off all that. He understands the analytics that goes into it. It doesn't mean that you're going to make the right decision every time, but um, it really takes that buy-in. So. Um, it's a chess match out there, um, and you can make one wrong move that will hurt the next 60 laps. I thought for sure we, we had it, to be honest with you, um, as that last run was starting to unfold. And there was one very particular reason that we didn't, that he and I talked briefly about, that wasn't anything he did. It was, it was some gamesmanship by some damn smart racers in front of us. Um, the math should have worked out, and it didn't, but that's why Richmond's awesome. And we found another way to win it. When that caution come out, I knew he was right back in the game. Thank you. OK, before we can continue, do we have any additional questions for Chris? All right, Chris, thanks so much for joining us. And congratulations on the win. OK, we will continue on over here. Chris Powell, Couch Coach Live. Congratulations, Denny, on the race and winning today. You've been going to this track since you were five years old. This is your fifth win here at the Raceway. Just talk about the significance of winning at your home track today and it being um, Easter Sunday. Yeah, it's special. I mean, I, my kids has been, it seems like a long time since they've been able to uh, enjoy Victory Lane. So, uh, you know, having friends and family all here uh, it certainly is, it means a lot. Uh, we did a little special thing with Toyota uh, yesterday up in the grandstand, sat in the seats that my mom still have. She's had season tickets for, I guess, about 30 years now. So um, same same area and just sit in those seats. You know, I, I just, I see the highlights from the 90s and the 2000s when I was watching races at this track and, uh, you know, really appreciated kind of the techniques of what some of the great drivers did around here. And now that I get to do it myself, um, it's just really fun um, to to be part of it and be on the other side of the fence, you know, 20-some um, years later. So it means a lot to me, for sure. I mean, add on top of that, you've got, you know, it's a Toyota owner's race, and so <laughs> Toyota was dominating. Martin was going to be the one that takes it if it goes green, and then uh, we were able to do it uh, because of that caution. So uh, it's, uh, it's special. Each one of the wins are special in certain ways, but any one of the Richmond wins always has got a special place. Hello. Yep. Steven Sykes in Live and Global Media. Two quick questions. One, about 85 laps out there to go. You were third place in like one and a half seconds apart. What was the decisions that went into make things happen to get you around towards the front? Yeah, it was Chris made it obviously a strategic decision there to to pit later than what the other two, you know, they peeled off. And when he didn't say anything to me for one lap, I knew what my job was at that point, And that was to be a machine and just run the fastest laps I could on those old tires to maximize lap time to uh, to then give us a shot to have better tires and run those guys down um, once we uh, came back out. So, you know, 
he uh, again he talked about it. It's kind of a math equation on what the right time to pit is, and he felt like uh, the the decision they made was a little bit too early. So he stuck to his game plan, and um, you know we were going to net out the same position anyway. Um, had that caution not came, but uh, it certainly I thought was the the right call, and we just kept ourselves close enough in the game to when you have those opportunities where your pit crew can win you the race, it it happens. And, you know, I spent the last three years, you know, counting on both hands and feet, you know, races that, you know, sometimes the pit crew didn't didn't necessarily help us that day, and we probably lost races because of it. But, you know, we're starting to get those back now because we've got a team that's really, really strong, and they, they deserve it. And, you know, I'm just lucky to be part of their team today because that's what got me the win. Uh, the second question, sir, is a few, few days ago you had some concerns and comments regarding the how NASCAR implements their rules and the points and the penalties. Do you feel after a few days now, do you have any additional thoughts or rethink some of those words? And do you feel any of that played into the decisions today and how they went about the rules and penalties for the rain? Yeah, it was it was groundbreaking for sure. It, it certainly made me nervous. Um, because uh, I mentioned it on Fox early on in the pre-race that, you know, I feel like I'm probably part of the 30% of the field that thinks that they can win in the dry. Um, whenever you put the wet out there, you're going to have the other 70% that are thinking, well, this is my opportunity to go jump out there and get a lead or, or put myself in a chance to win. Um, so I'm probably going to be a little more timid in the wet because I know that this thing's eventually going to go dry and I just need to make sure I'm still on the racetrack when it comes to being dry. So, um, yeah, it was crazy that uh, it all turned out the way it did, but I was able to hold my track position pretty good and I thought that they executed it as good as they could. You know, it wasn't raining outside. They made sure that the track was just straight damp and not, you know, a bunch of spray coming off the tires. So uh, I thought it was executed exactly how they planned. Okay, go to the back. Uh, Denny back here. Uh, uh, Jordan Monner, ESPN Richmond. Um, Denny, you mentioned Southside Speedway. I, I know in recent months there's been a, a huge push to bring Southside back. There's been a lot of development with the surf park in, off Hull Street and Poe White Parkway mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Have you sort of, you know, have you considered getting involved to, to bring Southside back? Um, and have you you know heard anything from local fans in terms of like hey you know you mentioned being a, a being remembered as a hero you know hey you're our chesterfield hero you know have you have you heard for that from fans to get involved yeah i mean i'd like to for sure uh you know i would love to be a part of it um i think those are bigger conversations for the state and the county um is is to how much they're willing to invest because it needs it needs some upfitting, you know, it needs a few million dollars worth of um, upgrades and um, to, to get it back on track for and, and back on par for other short tracks. So I'd love to be a part of that. I'd be happy to run it for the city or the or the uh, or the county. Um, but, you know, as far as investing my own money in it, it's, it's just very, very hard unless you're going to build a multi use facility there. Uh, which is what needs to be done. You can't just rely on running one night a week and, and that place being able to survive. You've got to have go-karts there. You've got to have concerts there. you got to have all kinds of different stuff that people can do. And, and certainly that area has grown up tremendously over, over the last decade or two. So it's in a prime location. Um, it's just a matter of whether the, the city or state wants to put funding behind it to, uh, to keep it going. Davey Siegel with Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. To the point of uh, what you said about your pit crew, and given with the Gen 7 era, everything on track is closer, everything on pit road is closer, how satisfying is it for you to know that literally, the numbers bear it out, whenever you come down, you're probably not going to lose anything, you're likely going to gain something, and in a situation like tonight, to your point, they kind of won you this thing. Yeah, they did. Uh, it, tonight was them, for sure. And uh, I, I feel like I just went through a, a two-year period in, you know, in 2020, maybe, 2021, where every time I came down pit road, I was terrified. I was like, please, just only lose one spot. Like, you know, it was, it was bad for a really long time. And so it just finally has turned the page, and we're, we're going the other way now. So... Um, you know, these guys have been together for, I think, three consecutive years now. Um, they were on Martin's team uh, 
you know a few years ago but they were young and they were making a lot of mistakes that first year and you know the the pickers and the drivers got together and they they wanted to make changes and so i ended up with those guys at really the right time right when they were starting to all click on our cylinders so you know i was certainly torn because you know I, it looked like martin was going to win uh when the caution came out i wasn't crazy overjoyed because i i always think about all the bad times on pit road and i'm thinking well man i just had a good finish and now we're you know we we have an opportunity to go backwards but i knew that if i maximized my job on pit road and there's so many there's so many metrics that go into being good yellow line to yellow line on pit road the pit crew is definitely a big part of it but me as a driver doing my job with my pit road speed how i enter the box how i exit the box all that really mattered and i knew about halfway through the stop when they dropped the jack on the right side in about three and a half seconds i'm like oh boy this is going to be a fast one so i knew it was going to be really close and, it, and i knew at that point just don't stall the car that was the only that would have been the most embarrassing thing that i possibly could have done is take the win from them if i made that kind of mistake but then you know we still got to race it out on the green white checkered so um this is certainly the new age nascar of how you can win races because it is so equal on, on the racetrack that you know, really the pit crew is the ones that really make a difference when everyone's running the same speed. Unrelated, but related to your crew chief. Did you pick Purdue in your final four for him? I have him winning. For him? No, I not because of him. I just, I liked them. Uh, so I only filled out one bracket and it was for uh, 2311 employees. And so I, I have Purdue winning. Uh, they're not going to be UConn, but it's at least a, ch a shot. <laughs> All right, we're going to take two more questions for Denny. We're going to go to Zach and we're going to finish with Bob. Zach and Tansvetti, kickingthetires.net. I know you went through the uh, the tunnel on the front straightaway the other day. You saw uh, something that a fan left. Are you going to take that way going out and see what they left this time? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um, I, I was just happened to do – I was doing something on the front stretch, and um, so it was – Jared reminded me that the, that picture that uh, that – he showed me uh, the tunnel is right there so I wanted to go see it and I, I thought it was just interesting to see everyone's you know saying blank was here uh, there was quite other slogans that uh, you can't really say that were on the wall but you know it's fans just enjoying you know sort of same reason that they write all over the walls and the start finish line right it's it's their way to leave a mark on 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 the at the racetrack so I, I enjoyed it and you know to have kind of your own you know picture in the tunnel and you're in victory lane uh, it certainly is special, especially at this track. Uh, Bob Harfus, Fox Sports. Um, you know, they probably, with the fact that there wasn't much rain afterward, they probably could have tried the whole track, you know, maybe start 20, 30, 40 minutes later, um, not have a long caution. But I'm curious, from a driver standpoint and your owner hat, I mean, is it okay that, you know, hey, get cars on the track, People are watching at home. People are here. I, I think they do. wanted it to be wet. I mean, I say that because there was no jet dryers out there. They had the option to use jet dryers, and they did not. So I think that they wanted to have uh, wanted to try this out. This is probably the right track to do it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad we didn't all just pile up in the corner. Everyone was kind of patient the first few laps. So I think this, I think it played out just how they wanted it to. And then you're okay with that. I, I was okay with it. Yeah, I think you know. The people immediately will ask, well, surely you can do this everywhere. You cannot do it any track that we run faster than this one. So um, it was it was just uncomfortable enough entering turn one at those speeds um, with it being wet. So it, it was it was executed just as how they wanted. And I thought the drivers did it perfectly. All right. Thanks for coming in, Danny. And congratulations. Thank you.